Hello, Guardians. It is Ebontis, and Bungie dropped the last TWAB of Season of the Chosen right before Season of the Splicer is to launch. So we've got a little bit to go over, some exciting, you know, weapons that are coming our way. So let's jump in. So the first thing is, if you haven't actually watched all of the Season of the Splicer stuff and looked at it, uh, please do, because for one, did a full video over it, so you guys can check that on my channel, went over all the speculations of what it could all mean. There's a full trailer, a lot of information in there, so definitely make sure you check it out. But yeah, Season of the Splicer, we're working with Mithrax, who we've worked with on the Zero Hour mission, and we're fighting against the Vex this season. So there's more to it, but I go over all the details in there. If you haven't checked it all out, you know, spoiler warning, that stuff's coming. Quick run through on the calendar. Main pieces. Override is going to be the new six-player match made activity that is um, going to be for Season of the Splicer specifically. You've got it on Europa, Moon, and then on Tangled Shore. I don't know if it's going to go on like a weekly rotation or all of them are going to open up. Vault of Glass will launch on May 22nd. The raid challenges that are probably involved in the raid race on the first day, those open up June 15th. And then on July 6th, you've got the difficulty options. They're actually toying with master difficulty for raids. I don't know what the rewards are going to be. We'll have to see how that one plays out, but they are back to actually looking at difficulties in raids. The other main piece besides Solstice of Heroes, which is the usual seasonal event around this time of year, is the weekly Pinnacle mission. It starts in week three and it goes through week eight. Now, I don't know if it's just like there's six different like times if you play through it that you'll actually experience six different story dialogues, something along those lines. But it seems like one of the story vehicles that they're going to use to tell us what goes on this season. So overall, it seems fairly cool. Definitely dig more into that one if you like. Uh, outside of that, we've got rewards previews. So you've got the seasonal armor for Season of the Splicer. This is the seasonal armor you'll earn from what it says the seasonal activity override. So Warlock's looking pretty cool. Got a Predator looking helm. The Titan looks the same on both, but definitely got that weird alien looking head. Hunters, of course, overall, you got like the two fangs, a whole bunch of fallen eyes, and then the spiky fallen hairy type helm and, you know, all the fur and stuff on the shoulders. Definitely very fitting for fallen. So overall looking fairly cool. For the season pass armor, of course, you've got this is your season pass armor. I'm saying this one's green goblin. This definitely just looks like a fallen. And the only thing I can see on the Titan, which is my class, sadly, is somebody like shoved a shank on the Titan's head. It's all I can see. Somebody said it, and I can't unsee it. So I don't love the helmet. They look cool overall styling wise, but this Titan helmet is just, just goofy to me. Um, they did mention the seasonal armor. This one up here is going to be taken out of the season pass. Um, I've actually used that before to level up alt characters. So kind of sad on that one. Mainly, though, it's going to be earnable throughout the seasonal activities and also Umbral Engrams. They're giving more, you know, reason for Umbral Engrams. Uh, but they're just putting more Glimmer, Shards, Upgrade Modules, Exotic Engrams, Enhancement Cores, Prisms. They're throwing more of that into the Season Pass, which I guess isn't a bad thing since most people will play through that. And you may not even care about the actual seasonal armor because I don't touch it till the end of the season anyway half the time. So I guess that's not bad. Just got to earn the armor in the actual activity, which isn't bad. Now we get into all the weapons, which is where everybody's fairly excited. So on the season pass, you've got the new stasis, like, I don't know how it's going to proc, but it seems to actually shoot a stasis bullet. This is a little exotic sidearm. We've got the uh, shotgun. I think this one's at level 45. And then we've got the light, the light machine gun, the big old heavy weapon. Looks like that one is going to be at level 30. So those look fairly cool. Down here, we've got a couple more. I can't tell if this is like a breach load grenade launcher. Maybe it's a wave frame for the first time. Um, but it looks like it's got a big enough barrel that if it's not a shotgun, being as we already have one, I don't know what else it would be. Maybe it's a heavy grenade launcher. Maybe it's a breach grenade launcher. It just looks like a really big tube on the end. And I don't know if that would be a rocket per se. Maybe, but I can't quite tell. Got another sidearm, it looks like, unless it's just a hand cannon a little bigger. I, maybe it's a hand cannon. I've been thinking it's a sidearm, but... Hand cannon, maybe, just so it's not two sidearms in the same season. Uh, they did say somewhere there's a pulse rifle. I'm guessing it's this one. That one is probably something I'm going to use because I love pulses. This might be a scout, might be an auto. Have to see what we got down there. This is Null Fusion. I'm sorry, Null Composure. That is the kind of per the pursuit weapon. So that's one that you'll be going through. You can earn it in Gambit. You can earn it in Strikes. You can earn it in Crucible. And then remember, afterwards, you can actually get the ornaments from those activities to put on it. I actually really like the color scheme on this one. Uh, kind of the darker, almost black or gray with the blue and yellow accents. 
I actually really like the look of this one. I don't know what type of fusion rifle it's going to be. It does look fairly compact. Somebody probably knows already, but I don't yet. Still, fusion rifles can be fairly fun. They're getting a little buff and range drop off from what we got last week on the sandbox. So maybe they'll be a little more potent crucible. Something to keep shotguns at bay. We'll just have to see. Down here, we do have more weapons going into the post-game rewards for Gambit, Crucible, and Vanguard. So now there's 12 legendary weapons to earn for per activity. Uh, looks like we've got another Breach Load Grenade Launcher. This one looks like almost the Iron Banner Grenade Launcher, so I don't know how this one's going to go. This looks like a Duke down here with a bit of a paint scheme on it. And this Gambit weapon definitely looks like a submachine gun. Exit strategy, something along these lines. Probably renamed, reskinned, something along those. But again, more weapons from those playlists along with things like, you know, what everybody tends to go for already. You've got your Frozen Orbits and you've got your Rocket Launcher. I think it's Royal Entry. And then the hand cannon that I'm blanking on. But that's where most of the stuff is going to be. And then, of course, everybody on Twitter freaked out because the Nightfalls have updated stuff. So they mentioned previously that the Nightfall weapons, uh, you've got your Adept weapons that come from the Grandmasters as well. But the Swarm, Palindrome, and Shadow Price are going to be on kind of hiatus for the start of the season. And these are what's going to be in their Grandmaster and your Nightfall level stuff. So you've got Hung Jury. This is what everybody lost their mind about. So Hung Jury is returning. If you played Destiny 1, that is a really, you know, favored scout rifle, to say the least, by a lot of people. Had a really good perk. It was like Dragonfly or Firefly or something like that. Um, it just always felt good as a scout rifle. Now, scout rifles right now, not feeling too good, especially in PvE, where most people would use this thing. It is a faster firing scout rifle. Unfortunately, I don't love many of these in PvE activities at the moment, so I still maybe lean into pulse rifles instead of scouts. It's good to see it come back, and it will have a chance to be adept because these will roll into Grandmasters. Just going to have to see what the perks are like, how it feels, if scouts get to feeling any better. Don't know. Down here is actually a favorite of mine for sniper rifles from Destiny 1. It is the Irene RR4, SR4? RR4. Um, it's an Amelon sniper rifle. They actually have very low aim assist, so most people will be like, why do you want that? For some reason, for me, I actually always really enjoyed the gun. I'm never going to claim to be a great sniper, but when I got a snipe with the Amelon snipers, for some reason, they just felt really good. I mean, snipes always feel good, but something about the Amelon, the energy sound, they always feel really cool. I enjoy them, so can't wait to have that one come back. And I think people are saying this is either the Wizard 77. It's a fusion rifle. Again, fusion rifles got a little bit of a buff in tuning, so they're kind of going lean and heavy into those. I don't know specifically which Vanguard one that is, I saw somebody on Twitter think it was saying the Wizard 77. Maybe that's it. That one used to have some potency as well. So overall, we got two specials and one primary going through the Adept Weapon kind of rotation that you can get from Nightfalls and Grandmasters this coming season. And as the season is going to be three and a half months long, a little bit longer to earn them as well. Um, they also said some of the perk combinations on these are going to be kind of cool. Want an auto rifle that gains extra damage after defeating an enemy with a grenade? How about a sniper that's quick on the draw but can also be rolled with Dragonfly? Uh, this will probably have Dragonfly on it. Every season invites interesting play choices. So they said a new Pulse Rifle from the seasonal offering. That's probably what I'm going to be going for. I've been called out on the podcast. I like my dad rifles. Apparently Pulse Rifles are, and I are friends. If you guys know me from my Go Figure days at all, I would love to have one, that one back. We'll see. We do have some patches coming. So Destiny 3.2.0 will come uh, with basically Season of the Splicer. They've got some colorblind support coming. Stasis subclass tuning, I do want to read this out. Hunters, the freeze detonation from Silence and Squall has been reduced from 12 meters to 8.5, so almost cutting it by a third. Enemy Squall now has a red ring. This I like, actually, if you can see on the ground the ring of kind of terror, so you can actually avoid it, because I feel like sometimes I can like maybe feel like I get out of the way, and then I still get tagged. Titans, Shiver Strike melee energy is now refunded when Glacial Quake ends, so if you use your super and you've been, you know, punching around a little bit, you actually still have your normal me melee energy refunded as opposed to starting from scratch just because you use your super. Uh, fix an issue in which players can trigger Whisper of Torment by standing in an opponent's barricade. That was one people could just, like, farm super energy, which is probably not the best. Warlock's Shadebinder, Bleak Watcher Aspect now grants two fragment slots. I don't know how many it was. If it was one, maybe this is buff. If it was three, maybe it's less. Somebody please comment and let me know. Chaos Reach fixed an issue where Chaos Reach Super that was allowing it to penetrate some thin walls and objects just enough to damage and kill opponents on the other side. So if you're right on the corner of a wall, you can still take splash damage. They discussed this previously. But if you're behind an object, hopefully it's not going to penetrate that like board or mini wall that you're sitting behind. As for PvP, uh, they don't state too much about it. Basically, they state there's some key places they're looking at for the future right now. 
Um, stasis freeze, slow accuracy penalties, and whisper of hedrons. Certain ones that they're looking at for PvP balancing and sandbox right now, because that's from Kevin Giannis, the dis sandbox discipline lead. Uh, as for an update, we've got the nav mode, which I can't really click. I can zoom this in. So you can actually see you've got bounties on the side. You're going to be able to look at your tracked quests and also your kind of the full elimination roster and everything that you've got. So you've got a lot more that you can look through just by pulling up your ghost, which will be helpful so you don't have to go into that screen every single time. Uh, that being said, there, you know, if you're tracking a quest, you won't be able to track a quest anymore, basically because you're going to be able to look at just about everything you got in your ghost. We'll have to see if there's like multiple pages and it gets old. But overall, I'd say this is a good change to not have to go into the menu. Um, especially for people on console where menus are slower. This will be a nice quality of life. Uh, for the UI, um, they're going to add legends added to the director destinations tab. This is where you'll find the vault of glass in just a few weeks. I guess that kind of tells what Vault of Glass is going to be as a Destiny 1 activity, Destiny 1 content vault put into Destiny 2. I don't know if they're going to tie much story into Vault of Glass. I hope they do. But it basically means that, you know, a legend, an older activity coming back into the game or re-put in from the Destiny content vault is going to go into, maybe some are going to go into this Legends category. Just have to see. Um, the Helm. We are getting an update to the Helm with Season of the Splicer. There's a new room and stuff we're going to be dealing with. So you're going to have some changes there, but it's also going to appear on the director itself. So you're going to be able to go directly to it without going to the tower page first. Uh, they're making some changes to Glory, Infamy, and Valor to kind of basically fix a couple bugs that were in there, add ranks in, kind of make the streak bonus linear. Basically, I think they're just trying to even these things out because when Season 15 comes, and actually, I don't think this is right now. They said these changes are a precursor to some larger improvements planned for 15. So some of these changes may go into effect now, but Season 15 is when they're going to be introducing the Vanguard reputation same way they did for Gambit and Crucible, and rebalancing in Infamy to bring a reset in line with Valor and more. So there's more stuff coming in Season 15. This is just some stuff right now they're making more linear, they're shortening the amount of Infamy it takes, kind of making some of these reputations a bit more streamlined, basically. Eververse is going to have an archive to it, so you can go back in the archive if there's something you missed, old exotic ornaments, you'll be able to go dig for them. So that's not quite as like, are, is, are they selling it this week? Is it here? So it's, you know, a little more, if you want to go buy it, they're going to let you go buy it. Probably fine. Uh, a couple general things. Momentum Control and Team Scorched will return this season in the weekly playlist rotation. So they've been kind of updated for this season, mostly overall. Fix an issue causing vaulted gear to erroneously drop from strike playlists. Uh, added a full suite of trace rifle focused mods. I did want to call that one out because I don't know if you know it, there are no trace rifle mods in the game. Some people thought like auto rifle mods worked. Now they're going to have their own slew of mods. If you want to go run any of the trace rifles, Divinity included, which is an important one for a lot of PvE activity. Now you can go, you know, scavenger mods and you can go ammo reserves because you can actually go trace rifle specific. Most people probably don't use the others as much in certain places, but Divinity specifically, people are probably going to be very happy to see this. Uh, as for the patch notes, um, they do also mention the 2018 and 2019 Solstice of Hero armor glows. They are trying to get those working uh, right around when Solstice of Heroes launched for the transmog slash armor synthesis system. So it's good to see that that's actually something they're working on trying to get there. A couple things to note as for times. Remember, when the season ends on May 11th, basically when reset happens next week, on Tuesday, all of your season of the chosen things, your Europa Penguin Seal, or Europa Penguin, the Chosen Seal, Hawkmoon Shoot, go get your bunch of your awards, claim the roar before the season is over, and make sure you go buy it if you want to. Seasonal challenges, if you want that 4,000 Bright Dust, go get it. Shaders, delete all your shaders if you haven't yet because they're going to be gone. A couple things to note for dates as well to wrap this thing up on Friday, aka tomorrow. Uh, Bungie is going to be down for four hours. So from 10 a.m. Pacific or basically 9.45 a.m. Pacific, they're going to kick everybody off Destiny 2. And then four hours later at 2 p.m. Pacific, they're going to be able to log back in. So that means two things. Trials is going to be delayed till 2 p.m. Pacific. And so is Xur. So my Xur video will be delayed and not too far away from actually when I go live on the podcast. Uh, last word, we're going to be live twitch.tv slash Ubontis. It's going to be seven or by Pacific Standard Time. Uh, what would that be? We'll be live 5 p.m. Pacific for the podcast. No, 4. 4 p.m. Pacific for the podcast. 7 p.m. Eastern is the one I know, but 4 p.m. Pacific is when we'll be live. So you can tune in. We've got EK to talk about all of the Season of the Splicer stuff. And then next week on Tuesday, maintenance will be very short, mainly because they're doing most of the maintenance on tomorrow, on Friday. 
So on daily reset time, 9 a.m., you're going to get kicked out at 9.45, for sure kicked out, and then 10 a.m., you'll be back in. Other than that, there's some main issues and known issues that they're working on. You've got some fixes coming. And that basically wraps it up. If you've got some really cool stuff from like movie of the week, which I'll have to check out this one because I hear it's actually fairly cool. Art is all about the baby fallen, which is basically everywhere. So that's awesome. Um, and then, of course, the golden shoes, pants and sweater hunter, because, you know, apparently that's going to be coming as well. So that is what we got this week. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tune in tomorrow. Zer will be delayed. So. But that is about all we got right now, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like below. Leave a comment if you guys are excited about any of this stuff coming up next season. As I said, Zer will be delayed. So I'll get it out as soon as it's up. But that's going to be 2 p.m. Pacific time. Podcast will be at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so a couple hours in between, not too long to knock that one out. EK is coming on. So twitch.tv slash so You can find me streaming over there. A uh, whole bunch of stuff, but destiny two included. And you guys can also find me over on Twitter. If you're new to the YouTube channel and you enjoyed this, want to see my Zer videos or anything else I do hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell. And hopefully you guys will see videos from me in the future. Have a good one. I'll see you soon.